Hello, in this video, we will cover how to answer questions on for loop in Java. The for loop in Java is an entry control loop that helps us to execute a block of statements iteratively or in a loop for a fixed number of time. I am going to assume you know the basics of for statement already. If not, you can watch my video to get the basics right. Now to solve MCQs, if there is a compilation or syntax error as one of the options, the first thing you need to do is check for the syntax. Like in these statements, which of them have correct syntax of the for statement? For syntax, the first thing to check is if all the keywords such as for, int, etc. are in lowercase and variables are named as per naming convention and there is no missing or extra punctuators. Like in this, there is an extra semicolon in for. A for loop has exactly two semicolons. It cannot have more or less. You can initialize multiple values, but they need to be separated by comma. What about this extra semicolon at the end of print or the block? Will it cause an error? No. You can put as many extra semicolons at the end of a statement or for block and it will not cause any compilation error. Now let's see the next for statement. Here we do not have any increment, so will it cause a compilation error? No, it will not. In a for loop, you can just keep two semicolon and then it is actually called as an infinite loop. So in this next for statement, we have not written the condition statement too. So will there be no compilation error? there will be an error. Java is able to recognize that you have written an infinite loop and it will give an error in the statement after the for loop saying that it is an unreachable code. Only if it locates a break somewhere in your for loop, it will not give you an error. Let's see the next statement. Here equal to equal to operator is used. Is it valid? Yes. You can use any relational operator over here and it can be any boolean expression. But it is also using another variable j while we are initializing and incrementing i. That is also valid. You can use three different variables in initialization check and increment section without any error. So can we change the value of i inside the loop? Yes, you can. It will not give you any compilation error. Let's see next for statement. Now this has a semicolon after the for loop. Will it cause an error? No, it will not, but it will signal an end of the for block here itself. The loop will execute, but it is an empty loop. i is equal to 10 is not part of the loop, but the next statement after the loop. So there is no syntax error here. There is an error as scope of i ended along with the for block so now you cannot use i and it will show up as an undeclared variable. Same is true if you try to use any variable which is declared inside the for block and you try to use it outside. Let's see next for statement. We know we can use multiple initializations and increment by using a comma. Can we use multiple test conditions also by using comma? No, we cannot. If we want to combine or add multiple conditions, then we have to use logical operators like AND or OR. Now other than syntax as the option, you might have some cases where it might have runtime error or exception as the option. Two most common ones are divide by zero and array index out of bound exception. If you do not know arrays, do not worry, we will cover loops with arrays in a separate video. Coming back to divide by zero exception, in these questions, you will see a division somewhere inside the for loop and some condition of the loop leading to denominator being zero. Like here i is from 2 to 0 over here. When i reaches 0, x will be divided by 0, giving a runtime arithmetic exception. In array index out of bound to, there is some condition when index goes beyond the array size. Like in this example here, index i runs till 2, 
So when it tries to access ARR2, it will give array index out of bound error. We will cover exceptions in a separate video, but these are two common scenarios you need to watch out for. After syntax, let's see how to solve output kind of programs. Now the first step in the output kind of program is to correctly identify the for block itself. For example, in these three output kind of questions, there is actually three different body of the loop. In the first one, there are brackets given, so it is very easy to identify the body of for and you know these statements are part of the for block. Now in the next one when no brackets are given and the code is indented like this, so are both statements part of for? No. Only the first statement till it reaches a semicolon is part of the body of the for loop. So in this for loop, only the first statement is part of the for loop. In the next for statement, you see there is a semicolon at the end of the for loop. So the for loop ends here itself and it doesn't have a body and none of the statements below are part of the for loop. So these three questions will actually give you different answers. So after identifying the for block, the next step is to look in the for loop and see how many times the loop will get executed. Let's just take some different loops and just answer how many times the loop will get executed and what would be the value of i. Now all of them look the same. And some of you might just give the answer that they are executed 5 times. Let's see them one by one. In the first loop, i first takes a value of 0. Then it is checked if it is less than 5, which is true. So the loop will get executed and i will get incremented by 1. Then i will be 2, which is also less than 5. So the loop will execute and same for i is equal to 3 and i is equal to 4. Now when i will get incremented to 5, it will be checked if it is less than 5. Here it will evaluate to false and not enter the loop. So loop will run 5 times and it will have values of 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. When it is 5, it will exit the loop. Now let's look at the next question. Only difference over here is that it is less than equal to 5. Here too I will start with the value of 0 and then I will get incremented by 1 every time to 1, 2, 3, 4 but this time it will execute for 5 too as 5 less than equal to 5 will evaluate to 2. Moment i is incremented to 6, it will be false and the loop will stop executing. Now let's see the next one. Here i is initially assigned the value 5. Then it is checked if i is less than 0. Since it evaluates to false, the loop stops then and there and it is executed 0 times. Let's see the next one. Here i is initialized to 5 and i is checked if it is greater than 0 which is true. So the loop will execute. At the end of the loop, it will get incremented by 1 to 6. It will then again check if it is greater than 0. So the loop will execute. Then i will get incremented to 7. Again since it is greater than 0, it will execute. Now since i is incrementing and in all cases it will always be greater than 0 means true, this means it is an infinite loop. Now let's see the next one. Here i is initialized to 5. Then it is checked if i is greater than 0. Since it is true, the loop will execute. Then i will decrement to 4. Then again it will be checked if it is greater than 0. Since it is yes, it will take the value to 3, then 2, then 1. Now the moment it is 0, 0 greater than 0 will evaluate to false and the loop will stop executing. So here too loop will execute 5 times. Now let's see the next one. Here i starts from 0. The condition checks if i is less than 5, which is true. So the loop will execute. Then i is decremented to minus 1. Again the condition is checked if i is less than 5. 
it is true so the loop will execute and i is decremented to minus 2 now since i is getting decremented the check condition will always be true so this is also an another infinite loop now let's come back and solve the three questions again let's take the first question we will first see the for loop and see how many times the loop will execute and what will be the value of i note it down vertically on your rough page here i will take values from 1 to 4 as the loop will execute four times when i becomes 5 it exits the loop now in the first for loop there are two statements which are getting executed in the for block so we will solve them first when i is 1 s is calculated as 0 plus 1 and then it is printed so 1 gets printed in the second iteration of loop sum is now 1 and i which is 2 gets added to sum and 3 is printed note since it is a print statement everything is getting printed in one line then 3 gets added to sum so 6 gets printed then 4 gets added and 10 gets printed so this gives us the answer for this loop let's see the second for statement here to first we will write values of i vertically on rough page here only s is equal to s plus i is in the loop so the sum will get added to i every time but it will not get printed once it is outside of the loop the print statement will get executed and it will print 10 so this is the answer for this for loop now let's solve the last one here also we will first write the values of i on rough notebook in this the loop will execute but nothing will get added to sum when i turns to 5 the control will go to statement s is equal to s plus i so 5 will get added to 0 and s will become 5 which will get printed and 5 is the answer now let's look at some questions which are for along with if like the program below how will you answer this question here since there is no compilation error in the choices so you need not spend time on finding any syntax error we first identify the for block and then we will take a look at the for loop and note down the values of m and number of times the loop is executed here m is starting with 2 and then incrementing by 2 every time till it reaches 12 note it is less than 12 so it will execute 5 times now for each value of m we will execute the if block when m is 2 the first if is false so it will enter else if where m is less than 10 so l will get printed note it is print so the cursor stays in the same line then for m is equal to 4 also it will behave the same it will enter else if and l will get printed in the same line when m is 6 m percent 3 will be true so it will print s but now since it is a print ln after printing the cursor will move to the next line then for 8 it will print l as it will enter else if then for 10 both the first if conditions will be false so it will enter the else block and print m in the same line so this is the output of this for statement now let's look at some questions which have break or continue which alter the program flow and impact the number of times the loop is actually executed we will solve this by following the same steps here also since there is no compilation error in the choices so we will not check for the syntax we identify the for block and first we will just look at the for loop and note down the value of y and number of times the loop is executing here y is starting with 0 and then incrementing by 1 every time till it reaches 10 note it is less than 10 so it will execute 10 times and y will have values from 0 to 9 which we have written vertically now for every value of y we will execute the if block 
when y is 0 the first if condition of divide by 2 will be true so continue will get executed and control will come back to 4 where y will be incremented by 1 now for 1 all of the three if conditions will be false so it will enter else and print 1 and space in the same line with the cursor remaining on the same line as it is a print statement. Next for y is equal to 2, again the first condition is true, so it will enter that and hit continue, so we will go to next y is equal to 3. For y is equal to 3, it will enter the last else and print it with space in the same line. For next iteration y is 4, it will enter the first if which will be true, so it will continue to the next iteration. Note here it will not enter y is equal to 4 as the first if condition is already true. Next for y is equal to 5, again it will enter the last else and print 5 and space in the same line. Then for next iteration y is equal to 6, it will enter continue and move to the next iteration of y is equal to 7. Now here first and second if will be false but it will enter the third if which is break. Due to break the control will come out of the for loop. So now because of break the loop is executed only 8 times and the output is 135 which is the answer. Now you could also get questions to convert for to while or while to for. If you see a for loop you know it has initialization, check condition and increment and then we have the body of the loop. To convert to while, you follow a very simple process. You first write the initialization outside of the loop, then move the check condition as is in the while loop, then you move the body inside the while loop and then move the increment after the body still inside the while loop. This gives you the for loop converted to while loop. Note an important point. Increment will always come after the body of the for loop and not before. Let's take an example to understand the steps in detail. Now in this first you will identify the four components of if block. Here there is initialization, the check condition, the increment and then what is the body of the loop? Everything which is indented? No. Since there are no brackets, the body of the loop ends when it encounters the first semicolon. So only s plus is equal to x is part of the body. Not even the second statement written in the same line. The second step after this is to first copy everything which is before or after the for loop as is in the answer. In between we will write the code for a while loop. Then we will extract the initialization and copy it as it is first. Then we will write the while with the condition only and put the curly brackets. Then in the body of while we will first copy the body of the for loop as is and then copy the increment last within the body. This will give you the answer. Now if you get a question to convert while loop to for, it is just the reverse of this. Let's take this as an example. First step is to examine the test condition. Here the test condition is n greater than 0. Now we have to find initialization. There are three variables getting initialized here. Are you going to use all of them? No. You are going to use only initialization of variable which is used in the check condition which is n. Also do not move declaration in the for loop even though we can. In some programs the variable is used after the for loop and if we move it in the for loop it will be valid only in the for block. So leave the declaration outside only. Next we will find increment or decrement condition inside the loop. Here too it should be with n. Here you can see n divide by equal to 10. So we will mark it as our increment condition. Next whatever is before or after the loop we will copy it as it is in the answer. 
then we will write the for loop and put in the initialization check condition and increment condition then we will copy the remaining body as is this will give us the equivalent for loop for this while loop with this we come to the end of this video you can practice more questions like this using our mcq question bank if you have any doubts you can always join us at simplycoding.in thank you and all the best Thank you.